Hi guys, Daniel here. Welcome to this Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword video where I'm gonna guide you through the Lanairo Mining Facility. Alright guys, before we can unlock and enter Lanairo Mining Facility, we must find and activate three remote power nodes. The location of the nodes can be found by dowsing, and the first one is found behind a Bombabel statue to the west in Lanero Desert. To activate the power node though, we must trigger the time shift stone that is located behind the Bombabel crack to the left. Our second node is located behind this Bombabel crack to the north. We have to make our way through a chamber by activating the time shift stone. Then use the beetle and the sword to put the Ampelus egg in the generator next to the closed door. The time shift stone is found under this rock in the middle of the room, a bomb to release it, then the beetle to activate it. Time to move the egg, and it's electric, so I'm gonna use the beetle to move it a bit faster without taking damage. And from here, I use the sword to get the egg in place. The third and the last power node is found in another chamber at the southeastern part of Lanero Desert. This chamber works the same way as the previous one. Hit the time shift stone hidden under some bombabel rocks in the middle of the main room. You wanna position Link on top of the block to the west in this room as you trigger the sand shift stone. To get there, you want to knock an Ampelus and surf the sink sand on its shell. Using the beetle to get the Ampelus egg over the abyss. Then I'm using the sword to get the egg into the generator. Alright, so with the three nodes activated, we can trigger this time shift stone and head over to the lock mechanism. By looking at the map, we can figure out the position for each of the icons. Water goes straight to the left, fire down right, and finally electricity straight up.
Okay, the first thing I do is to deal with all the Arachas in this room. They will jump and grab hold of Link if they get the chance. Can be quite annoying. Next, I'm gonna use the Beetle to pick up the Bomb Flower and in that way deal with the Electro Spume and to trigger the Bombable statue at the west side of the room. I need that statue down in order to trigger the switch on the wall. Before dealing with that switch though, I'm gonna work the east side by taking out the other Electro Spume and to grab a red Rupee. There goes the Spume. Then I'm gonna run over the sand and grab that switch. This opened the bars so we can access a chest containing a red Rupee. Okay, now I'll progress to the next room by trigger the switch on the eastern wall. In this room we encounter two Staldras. My way to deal with those is to block their attacks with the shield so they got stunned and the heads line up for an easy kill. If we don't take out all the heads at the same time, they will grow back. In order to progress to the next room, we need to push a box close to the platform so we can get a better reach and climb up. This is the biggest room in the dungeon, and one of the rooms we will come back to several times through our progression. We got a bird statue right here, so let's make a save. From here, we're gonna progress to the east and collect a key. There is some boxes blocking the staircase we wanna use, so I'm dealing with that by using the beetle and a bomb flower. On the route to the chest, there is an electric choo-choo and some thunder keys that we have to deal with. Shouldn't be too hard. So, here we get the small key that will be used to enter the eastern door in the previous room, the room with the two Staldras. So, from here, let's backtrack. In this room, we will encounter Froak, a flying pufferfish. For now, I'm dealing with those guys by using the beetle. As the beetle impact, they will explode. I think they explode if the spikes are not out. If the spikes are out, I think the fish will bounce away. Next up is to grab another bomb flower with the beetle and destroy a box blocking away in the southwest corner. Up there is a switch that we want to trigger. To reach that switch, we need to climb this southern wall covered with arachas. As Link gets close to them, they will uh, fall down on the floor so we can deal with them easily. Some more Arachas in a way. 
So, by trigger this switch, we can access a time shift stone that is located in the center of this room. By activating the time shift stone using the beetle, we will throw this complete room back in time, which will give us a new enemy to deal with and some switches we can trigger to progress. As we move Link away from the switch, the bars around the time shift stone will fall back. So, here we are facing a new enemy called Beemos. If it detects Link, it will shoot a homing laser beam. To defeat Beemos, you want to slash horizontally along the blue light, then stab it in the eye. Okay, so that was a bit shocking. Next up is a switch that will open some bars and give us access to a small chest holding a red rupee. On those conveyor belts we have to avoid the spikes. Simply run where it's a free way and make sure to collect the stamina flowers. Here we have another Beemos. Slash the blue line and stab the eye. And here we got another red rupee. Next up, we're gonna cross the room and trigger another switch. Here we have another Beemos. This one is taller and got two horizontal blue lights that we're gonna catch. And now we're gonna trigger this switch. So from here, we're gonna backtrack to the door we opened and we're gonna go there to get the special item for this dungeon. In this room, we wanna head east and climb up the ladder to the platform. In the distance, we see a breakable rock and a froak. I'm using the beetle here to make the pufferfish blow up the rocks. I need to work a little bit swiftly here since the froak will respawn quite quick. Up here on this platform, we will get the gust bellows. With it, we can simply blow enemies and stuff away and use it to activate devices that interact with wind. You got the gust bellows. It's an ancient and mystical device capable of blowing an endless gust of wind. We got another chest in this room containing a random rare treasure. It's located on the floor together with some arachas. And look at that, a golden skull. Now we're gonna leave this room and go back to the big main room. We're climbing back up the platforms and heading against the ladder to the west. I'm using the gust bellows to blow the enemies off the platforms. Quick, easy and a bit cheesy. Here we got another breakable rock and a froak. This time I'll be using the gust bellows to blow the fish into the rocks. And before leaving this area, I will push that block away to create a shortcut. Hopefully, I don't need to use it though. Here we got a big pile of sand blocking the way out. We deal with this using the gust bellows. Now we're back in the main room, 
I will push this block to the side, then I will head to the bird statue to save my progression. Now when we got the gust bellows, we can head back to the room with the two staldras and dust off sand that blocks our access to a switch. In the northeast corner of this room, we're gonna use the gust bellows and then push a block to trigger a switch. So the switch is under this pile of sand. And uh, to be able to move the block, we need to get rid of the sand there as well. I'm just gonna deal with that guy. Okay. Let's make it clean. Now we can push the block. From here, we're gonna go through that door, the door to the west in this room. Here, we got some Fruax, a lot of sink sand, and a bigger pile of sand that will get some attention pretty soon. I use the gust bellows to deal with the puffer fishes, and then I will deal with the archers in the middle with my sword. Alright, let's see what's under this pile of sand. It's a time shift stone. Look at that. So, now we've got platforms with some sort of propeller attached to it. By using the gust bellows on the propeller, we can move the platform forth and back on their tracks. Then we've got another spinner-like mechanism above this door. Simply use the gust bellow on it and that will open this door. We're gonna be aware of that beamus behind the door. We don't wanna get fried. It's a tall guy, so double the horizontal slash, then stab the eye. Next up is an enemy called a Centrope. When it detects Link, it will attack by shooting a missile. Use the shield to reflect the missile. Now it will send out Centrobe bombs that will fly towards Link. Have a look at the blue lines that indicates how to slash them with the sword. Here we can use Skyward Strikes if we want to. The Centrobe will now launch one more projectile that will reflect with our shield. And we are victorious. Now we got this platform that we want to move towards the center of the room so we can reach a chest holding another rare random treasure. Let's see what we get. Ah, I got a monster horn. From here, we're gonna use the moving platform again and climb the ladder to the north in this room. Be aware of that Beamos. Next to the door, we got a spinner mechanism again. Gust bellows for the win here.
Now we're starting to talk. Here we got two Stalras and one Armos. To defeat Stalra, we need to cut all the heads in one go. Blocking its attack will stun it and aligning the heads for an easy kill. Come at me, boy. We don't cut all day. There we go. Then we have the Armas. This one here is trapped in the past for now. To progress from here, we need to dust off this box, then push it into place. There we go. Now we can reach and access the platform. What do we have here? A chest behind bars and a pile of sand. Let's try to deal with that pile of sand, shall we? And look at that, a time shift stone. We can activate it by using the slingshot. Oh, look at that, first try, GG. And this will also bring Armas to life. Hello, bud. Okay. So this guy got a propeller thingy on its head and we want to use the gust bellows on it. That will make Armas open its mouth and reveal two crystals. The one at the front can easily be hit with a sword slash while the one in the back needs to be stabbed since it's protected from the sides. Armas attack by bouncing towards Link and occasionally makes a longer jump attack. As for now, I avoid the attacks by walking backwards in a circular movement. Defeating this Armos will open two doors. One leads to the bigger main room for this dungeon. The other one gives us access to the chest on the platform in this room. The reward waiting in the chest is the dungeon map. From here, we once again gonna go to the bigger main room and the bird statue to save our progression. Here we got a switch on the floor, granting us a quicker access to this area. And once again, I recommend to save the progress at the bird statue. Alright, so progression saved. Let's challenge the sink sand on the west side of this room. Here we got some electric spumes lurking about. I'm gonna deal with those using bombs. Use the beetle and the bomb flower if you're out of bombs. If you want, you can upgrade to both the quick beetle and the tough beetle at this point. There is a hidden walkable path beneath the sink sand. It goes in a straight line out from this sand pile right here. We're gonna walk all the way until we align with the platforms to the left. Here we will use the gust bellows on the sand piles and reveal a little hole in the wall. That would be a small and very simple maze that leads to a chest containing a random rare treasure. Here we got a few arachas dropping down from the ceiling. I'll simply back those before opening the chest. There we go. Now treasure, come to me. Ah, another golden skull. I'll take it. Alright, so from here we're gonna go back. Once again, I'm gonna deal with those enemies using bombs here. My aim is really great. Can I blame the controller? There we go, first try. And you take that. The deal here is that the Choo Choo would only be able to stand on a platform beneath the sink sand. So its location is our indicator for where we will turn right. Once again, I deal with enemies using bombs and the sand pile using the gust bellows. Huh? 
Navigating this maze leads us to a room filled with sand. Under the sand, we got spikes that will pop up and stop our progression. So we're gonna use the gust bellows here to clear the sand away, revealing our path. In this room, we also got a small chest holding yet another red rupee. To be able to exit this room through the door in the northeast corner, we must clear this switch from sand before we can trigger it. I'm gonna keep dusting as I want that red rupee before I leave the room. And here we go, so much hustle for a little red rupee. Okay, so we are now entering the main room in the northwest corner. We got a cart holding a time shift stone here. The switch would bring the cart back to this location if needed later on. Trigger the time shift stone will bring the area next to the cart to the past and start it moving along the rail. We could start a discussion on how bad my sword technique is but that will be a waste of time and probably not make me any better. From here I will simply follow the cart as platforms are spawned when it moves forward. In front of these stairs we got the boss door. As we can see it's locked up and inactive here in the present, so we will bring a cart and a time shift stone here later on when we got the boss key of course. For now, I'm gonna head up this way and save the progression at this bird statue. We've got a yellow choo-choo here, an electric choo-choo. Gonna deal with that really quick. Bad choo-choo, bad. So from here, we're gonna go and get the key to the boss door, also known as the ancient circuit. This means we want to backtrack by using a cart with a time shift stone on it. If the cart is not at your location, you can see if you got a switch close by, or use the beetle to activate the cart. Here I got another centrobe to fight, so I'm deflecting the projectile, then deal with the central bombs before deflecting yet another projectile. With some luck, we get some valuable rupees dropped on the platform. Alright, time to use the gust bellows on the spinner to let the cart out at its trail. In that way we can backtrack across the room. Okay, now we're gonna get some beamers spawning on the sides. I'm gonna use the cart as protection while passing carefully. This shouldn't be too hard, just use the power of patience here. One Bemus will spawn in front of us, right on the rail. I'm gonna be ready to chop it down as fast as I can. I don't wanna be sapped. Two more Bemus coming up on the right side. So I'm just gonna use the same method and let the card protect Link from being hit. Sneaky sneaky, are we? Another spinner. I'm gonna use the gust bellows again. Now we are back in the beginning of the main room. This time we got the gust bellows, so we can progress further from here. And we got the bird statue, so I recommend to save the progression, of course. At the east side, beyond this door we just opened, we got a bigger pile of sand covering a cart and a time shift stone. We need to trigger this one to progress to the next room. New platforms will spawn as the cart moves along the trails. 
first up is another Bemos that will spawn on the platform to the right. Then we got a spinner on the wall that we need to trigger with the gust bellows. Alright, so that opened the door, but since the cart is moving forward, the platforms has despawned so we can't access the door. This means we need to follow the cart, then deactivate the time shift stone, then trigger it again so it starts moving back. This will allow us to enter the door. However though, I actually recommend to go all the way back and save the game at the bird statue, so you don't have to deal with the Bemos and the spinner in case of a failure. In this room, we want to reach high ground in the southeast corner and trigger a switch, a button on the floor. This will grant access to a big time shift stone in the middle of the room. In this room, we need to be aware of the steam coming out from the pipes. The steam will knock Link away and in worst case send Link down the abyss. Here we got some bombable statues we need to flip in order to reach the sand pile and the time shift stone on the other side. Hmm, you can tell basketball is not my strongest talent. Let's trigger the time shift stone and bring this room back to the past. This will spawn some Bemos, a Centrobe, and two Armos guarding the chest holding the boss key. Let's deal with this Armos before running over the conveyor belts. Be aware of the electricity at the end of the conveyor belts. They could be a shocking experience for Link Boy. Here we got a moveable platform, but it's on the other side. Trigger the switch, we'll bring it over. Okay, so before us we got a puzzle to solve. The solution is behind the bombable statues on the west side. The quantity of the symbols tells us the order to trigger the switches on the east side. But first things first, let's cross the abyss and fight the centrope. Let's prepare the shield. Let's deflect the projectile. There we go. And the central bombs. Skyward strike for the win. And another deflection. Hey buddy, I'm over here. Don't go away. Hello, there we go. Don't ignore me. Okay. Now we can deal with the statues. So here we have two symbols. Let's put a bomb in this one. And yeah, it should be three symbols. And here we're gonna have one symbol. There we go. This will all make sense when we flip the statues on the other side and uh, when we can see the switches. From here we need to move this platform to the right so we can jump aboard. Let's bring out the gust bellows. Here is another box blocking a ladder. Let's pull it to the side, shall we? Now we're gonna deal with the Bombable statues on the east side of this room. We're gonna use the movable platform here to align up to the statues. In that way we can throw bombs in the hoops. Here we have the first switch. The switch in the middle will be the third switch to trigger. Let's reveal it. 
There we go. And this last one, that will be our second switch to trigger. I'm gonna position Link here on the solid platform. And uh, then I'm gonna use the beetle to trigger the switches in the corresponding order with the symbols here on the opposite wall. Fly, my friend, fly. That's number one. A quick look on the symbols. Number two would be on this side. Almost missed that one. And then we have the final one in the middle. And magic happens. So this opens the door to the north in this room. Let's head there and fight the two armor statues. By looking at the floor, we get an indication on when the Armos will be activated. Avoid the middle part to fight one Armos at a time. I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna use the Gust Bellows on its head. Then slash the crystal. The next crystal we need to stab. Walking a little bit backwards to avoid its attacks. Just be careful and it should not be too hard. Let's deal with the other one. Hello bud. See this one? It's gonna blow your mind. Here we go. A quick stab. No. Alright, let's try it again. Now stab. Come on. There we go. And we got access to that chest holding the ancient circuit, the boss key. You got the ancient circuit. It is made of shining gold. It also looks like it may be apart from something. The surface is inlaid with circuitry. With the key in our possession, let's go and open that boss door. On our way to the next room, we got one Bemus and a bit of a tricky conveyor belt. The conveyor belt got steam shooting out from the side, so we want to be careful and make sure to pick up the stamina fruits. From here we could backtrack to grab a red rupee and give us access to yet another shortcut. Walking this way we got some thunder keys to fend off. Could even deflect that one. <laughs> Moving this box opens the shortcut. It's a ladder here. But from here, I'm gonna head to the northeast side of the room where I'm gonna trigger the time shift stone that will give us access to the boss door. We also got yet another bird statue here, so I think it's a good opportunity to save the progression. Alright, the last time shift stone to trigger before we can activate and enter the boss room. Here we have wind gusts shooting out from the wall. Just be careful and it shouldn't be any problems to pause on this movable platform. Make sure to keep the platform within the area of the time shift stone. Going too fast or too slow and we will leave the area and that will inactivate the platform. Look at that. We are activating the boss door guys. That's how it's done. 
All that's left now is to interact with the door and solve the key puzzle. Thank you guys for watching this Zelda content. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and like the video. It would really help me out a lot and it will make me really happy. You take care now. Much love.